Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be responding to comments, answering questions, continuing discussions. This is one of those videos where I sit down and have a lengthy chit chat with you guys. So if you enjoy those videos, then keep watching. Disclaimer, I am dealing with a crazy uh, runny nose and I'm getting over a sore throat. I did take a COVID test. Thankfully it was negative. I do not know what the heck is going on with my sinuses so if i'm sniffling and my nose gets red it's i have like tissues all around me so that is why i'm not filming a review today and that is why you are getting a long chit chatty video and that is also why the audio is worse than normal i actually filmed a little intro to this video to see how i sounded but because i keep sniffling the the microphone picked up a lot of sniffling. So yeah, you guys are dealing with even worse audio than normal. You're welcome. So just letting you guys know that. I don't think any comments today are particularly on the spicy side, but as usual, if I have any spicy comments, know that any opinions are only my own. I can literally only speak to myself in regards to anything within the world of YouTube content creators. And also, if I reference any videos, I will obviously link those below. So the first comment we're going to get into was on my video where I shared my thousandth bottle. That's right. I have in, I'm at like 1,030 bottles. I am in the process of decluttering some of my collection. I'm not decluttering anything super like crazy. Some of my clones and some of my way lesser worn scents I've decided to just try and either sell or swap or get rid of. I've decided to just do that and get it done now. So, um, but I have a thousand bottles and when I was at 999, I did commission another bespoke fragrance from Dominique de Brana and I did talk about that fragrance and what I chose and why I chose that scent and the notes. And Belle Sativa, she, and I, again, if I mispronounce your usernames, and I'm going to because I'm bad at this, uh, their comment is, if you see my nose get red and weird jumps, it's because I keep blowing my nose. So just letting you guys know that. Anyway, their comment is, congratulations, what a way to celebrate. I think your nose deserves more credit than you give it. The distinct advantage of being a collector is that you know what scents have already been created, and from that you can derive that you like and don't like. I'm still trying to get to know what some of the expensive raw ingredients smell like, and I was wondering where you turned to. Did you purchase essential oils, which ones and where? And for the service, did you get samples of formulation and pick one? Or is it like a one-shot deal where you choose the seven cents and give a description where you get a single result? So I think that this is a few different questions in one go. First, um, thank you. If you don't know, and I think it's painfully blaringly obvious. I am not a an expert. I am not formally trained. I did not go to school. I am a fragrance enthusiast, but I am obviously not a perfumer or ha I have not worked in any type of situation where I got very extensive training. I do try to train myself as best as I can and do as much research as best as I can, but I am not, I'm not an expert and I'm not um, and authority, I like to give my reviews as consumer reviews, as somebody who is most definitely um, not somebody who knows anything. So I appreciate when people uh, think I do a good job, so thank you. So when somebody says being a collector and I know what smells, I do have experience with houses and how things develop on my skin and more of a personal experience with how things smell on me and how houses work and things like that. Now, when it comes down to raw ingredients, I do have a tiny little organ. It's It's been put away since the moving of this room and I do want to take it out again. I got most of my stuff from the Perfumer's Apprentice. I will link that place below. That is, that is not an affiliate link, do not worry. And I'm very mindful. When I first started kind of playing around, I used to just buy essential oils from like Whole Foods and the supermarket and a thing like that, but I feel like it's important to kind of really source the proper, um, almost like raw ingredients when you're trying to figure out if things work. Again, this is, this is coming from someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, because when you're utilizing 
ingredients to build a formula, to build a perfume, that all matters. So I've never properly built a formula from scratch. When I was debating on making Tiger Tiger, I did have a few blends that I did make to kind of get an idea of what I wanted. And then I obviously commissioned Sarah McCartney with my idea of how I wanted it to work and the ideas of the notes I wanted and, and trusted somebody who understood the science and had the experience and was actually good at making perfume to do what was necessary, which was understanding the science and understanding how to actually build the formula. Because it's more than just mixing like bergamot and vanilla and leather, it, it's science to it. So I have a small organ with some raw ingredients because I do like to mix around things and smell because it's fun. And I do have some books and literature for my own um, knowledge and just interest, uh, just so I can try and be the, the best reviewer I can possibly be, <laughs> but I'm not a perfumer. But The Perfumer's Apprentice is where I go because to get those ingredients that you would use to build a formula, like say if you were getting like a, a rose, you know, ingredient, the rose that you would get from like an essential oil from say like Amazon or Whole Food is going to be vastly different from a rose that you would get like from like sourcing to use in a fragrance. So there's also not just because you get a rose, there's different places and different providers, they might have different roses in different areas that have a better quality. And that's the other thing too, when it comes down to understanding um, perfumery. It's not just understanding how to build a formula, it's having an innate knowledge of suppliers, like which suppliers have the best chamomile, which suppliers have the best vetiver, where's the best place to get the best rose, where's the place to get the best oak moss. It's understanding all of that. And it was actually really interesting. I got to sit in on a conversation when Francis Kurjan was doing a talk with uh, Neiman Marcus sales associates, the people that work for the Francis Kurjan brand that represent the Francis Kurjan brand for Neiman Marcus. I was invited to sit in as a quiet observer and I did, I was invited to do that as a client because I purchase a lot of Francis Kurjan and I generally purchase it from Neiman Marcus. So I was invited to sit and listen, and it was so interesting to hear him discuss just the quality of just sourcing these notes. Because it's not just, I order bergamot from this catalog from this warehouse. There is an art and an understanding. It's almost like being a chef and knowing where to get the best produce, where to get the best dairy, when uh, is the best time to use the best meat and fish. It is an innate knowledge and understanding of not just building a formula, but the ingredients to build that formula. And perfumers definitely, um, some of the best ones have a very um, intense knowledge of all of that. But I do like to get ingredients whenever I can to understand how they smell and try to train myself the best way that, that I can not being experienced. So that way I might be able to properly detect like a bergamot or a vetiver. Um, and I think that that makes me a better reviewer, but I'm, um, I usually get those ingredients from the perfumer's warehouse, but there's oh, the perfumer's apprentice, there we go. But there's a variety of different places that you can get that. So I think that's one part of your question. The second part of your question is about the service that I did, which was, you know, the custom perfume experience from, you know, that Dominique de Bronman offers from La Via del Profumo. And that is a one shot thing. That is a, you're kind of, you're, you're going in blind. You do not get to smell the raw ingredients. However, I do believe that you can purchase them. And now you're not so much the raw ingredients, but if you just wanted to purchase, say, like the Mysore sandalwood, or if you just wanted to purchase a beeswax, I think that you can purchase them. And I think that he also, I could be wrong, I think that he also sells kits where you can mix and match. And I think that he even offers classes if you find yourself in Italy. 
but for the custom bespoke fragrance service, what you do is you pick the notes and then you fill out like a little questionnaire and you can also uh, request maybe, uh, I think a WhatsApp conversation or I usually just go back and forth with email. Now, what I do recommend doing is when you do go through the, the ingredients, you can obviously, there are links and it goes to a description of the, the, what it is. So it talks about how it smells, it talks about how it's sourced, it talks about how it's utilized. And then what I do is I look to other fragrances that it's used in if I'm unfamiliar with it, or I also look specifically when I was looking with the sandalwood, because I am working on a sandalwood video, but I have absolutely no experience. So I really wanna make sure I do that video justice because that is a very important ingredient and then very important just in general just note and you know sandalwood's very important just in general very protected very precious and I made sure that I when I chose the right sandalwood I did a lot of research on the correct sandalwood to use because I wasn't going to upgrade to the mice or sandalwood so it was which one did I use and I read different places talking about different sandalwood and the different uh, scent profile and which one's different. This one's wilder, this one's drier, this one's this way. I spent a lot of time researching the notes. So what I recommend doing because the service in and of itself is, is expensive, it's worth it in my opinion. You are getting a beautiful experience and the fragrances that he creates are just gorgeous is to spend the time, even if you're not upgrading to the rare um, ingredients, if you're not spending the 80 to 250 uh, extra euros for, you know, the extra sandalwood or orris or vanilla, to do research on first and foremost what the ingredients are, but to also do research on why. Like, why would I want to have Opapinox. That was the big thing for me with that fragrance was I spent a lot of time on like I wanted something to kind of, I wanted a sandalwood and I wanted another wood to tie in with the, obviously with the jasmine. So I'm, I'm going into this because this is something I'm really excited for. Obviously I talked way too much on it in the other video, but like with the jasmine, I specifically wanted the night the night blooming jasmine, the jasmine sambac rather than the jasmine grandiflorum because it's more of a masculine jasmine. It's more of a animalic jasmine. It's more of a muskier jasmine. It has more of that presence that I wanted. It's not so much of the, the softer, safer jasmine, which is still very beautiful and I love very much, but that's not the profile that I wanted for this fragrance. And specifically when I was looking for a wood to work with the Australian album Sandalwood, I wanted it to also work with the Jasmine. I wanted it to be kind of a bridge, which is why I chose the Gaiac wood, because that's a beautiful wood that works really well with florals, but it also has a nice smokiness, but it wasn't going to detract from the specific Sandalwood that I chose. And when I chose the Opapanox, I knew that that was going to add what I wanted as the undertone, as the foundation, almost as the mirepoix, as I described it, without taking away from what I really wanted was this kind of jasmine fragrance that had an earthy dryness from a cocoa and a nice roundness from a vanilla, but I didn't want it to be frosting. And everything came together beautifully. I, I love that fragrance so much. But with that fragrance, it was a, again, hey, this is what I want. And I did kind of send a message saying, if you could create this, this is what I would love it to be. But if you can't, I chose notes thinking that this is how I want it to be. And then we have a back and forth about it. But it is not where they send you, um, you know, different versions and you can test it and go back. Now I could be incorrect. I know that Christy from House of Matriarch, she does have a bespoke fragrance service and it is pricey. You get more than just a bottle and I think you get a little bit of a back and forth. 
And I think with a few other bespoke services from other places, there's a little bit more of a back and forth probably, but with this one specifically, not. Also, since it is in Italy, I think it would be harder and longer and more expensive to receive um, that back and forth. You'd be paying a lot more money in shipping because it is very expensive to ship uh, hazardous materials across the pond. So this is something that you do take a risk in. You don't really get to try it. So I would recommend having a bit of an understanding. And I think most people understand what bergamot is. Most people understand what frankincense smells like. Most people understand, you know, what cedarwood smells like, what vanilla smells like, what jasmine, what rose. But if you're going to do the service, and it's part of the fun of it actually is figuring out how, how you want the fragrance to smell. And when you're talking to him, when you're filling out that questionnaire, kind of explaining what you would like it to be. And it may not be able to be that and understanding that it may not be able to be that. And he's going to make you the most beautiful fragrance possible, which is going to be gorgeous, but understanding that you might have expectations that might not be able to be um, attained, but figuring out the best recipe possible. So it's figuring out the proper like opening middle and base notes and, and how to build that. And I think if you're, if you understand fragrances at all, and I'm not saying as somebody who I'm not trained, I'm not educated, but I think if you wear scents, like two to three fragrances, if you own two to three fragrances, you understand that I like the opening to be sparkly, I like the mid to be this way, and I like the base to be this way. You kind of understand what works on your skin and what you like. So you might understand that if I want a fresh, sparkly, natural perfume that has a bit of warmth to it, you're not gonna choose like the goat hair tincture with the oud and the frankincense and the carrot and the civet and all that stuff. You might understand that I wanna choose these notes. You'll get it. But I mean, part of the fun is kind of the research into it. I think I'm talking way too long about this one thing. I think I've literally done the video again. But, but yeah, it is a, a one-shot thing. So this comment comes from my, my big haul collection video that I just did, and this is from Adelaide Quartang. And they asked, where do I purchase my Zerjoff testers from? And that is, the, the two places I would definitely recommend are uh, Aura Fragrance and Fragrance Buy. I did a video talking about my favorite gray market websites. I will link that video below. Those are two places I've purchased testers from and had zero issues. So definitely recommend those, those websites. Comment um, comes from the same video and this is from Randall Ettrick. And if I mispronounce your username, I'm so sorry. Uh, their comment is, you can't just purchase Joe Malone because of the lack of performance. I know they are pretty subtle and very simple scents, probably not worth the price. So I've mentioned this before and I think like I can mention it because some people are like, what are you talking about? So every, every brand, every house, they have like proprietary formulas. They might have like a specific formula that they use, a certain accord, something. And there is something in an accord or something in Jo Malone fragrances that like a third of their scents turn sour on my skin. Now sour, like bitter and sharp can be either positive or negative. It can either be a deliberate smell profile that's added to add something. So sometimes sharp and like a fresh green spicy fragrance can be fantastic. Or sometimes bitter in a gourmand can add like a pithy bitterness, can add a bit of brightness without like hurting uh, the, the gourmand element of a scent. Bitterness, like a bitter chocolate note can be really, really nice. Now sour, I actually like sour woods or sometimes sour citruses can be really nice. However, there's a difference between a deliberate, really interesting sour note, like say a citrus or a wood, and sour milk. And we do not want to, I do not want to smell like sour milk. No, thank you. And there's something in certain Jo Malone fragrances that literally smells like, 
milk that maybe you left in the car that was kind of like it, it went under the seat and like you forgot about it for two weeks and oh you found it again and oh no you don't like that smell it smells horrifying on my skin it's it's it smells bad um, and then sometimes it doesn't smell that bad but sometimes it smells like milk that's a few days past its prime some Jo Malone fragrances just smell like get this off of me right now the one I like to just mention because I, I love it on everybody else is grapefruit. Now, when I worked at Tivana at a store at a mall down south, it was called Galleria Mall. I think like every city has like one or two Galleria Malls, but it was Galleria Mall in Fort Lauderdale. And the Neiman Marcus, I think the Neiman Marcus closed. But when the Neiman Marcus got the Joe Malone line, the, the sales representatives to the Joe Malone literally went to every single store in in that mall. And the mall was being redone, so there wasn't that many stores, and gave every single person that worked in this store, um, like, so many samples, it was ridiculous. They wanted everybody that worked in this mall to wear Joe Malone, so that way, when customers would come in to, like, to buy clothes, or to buy coffee, or to buy tea, they would smell the Joe Malone, and we would say, oh, Joe Malone, go there and buy it. So that was their marketing, and it was pretty smart. So everybody in the tea shop, we weren't really supposed to wear too many fragrances that conflicted, but we found that grapefruit was a nice scent that smelled uh, beautiful and fresh on everyone else but me. And it didn't get in the way of the experience of people um, smelling tea. It was like the one scent that everyone wore and everyone really enjoyed it. And everyone enjoyed it except me because it smelled horrible on my skin. It was so bad. I remember spraying it and loving it. And it smelled so good on everyone else because all the other uh, men and women in the tea shop were wearing grapefruit. So I know it smelled good on other people, not on me. And one thing I have no problem saying, I have confidence saying, is I have fantastic body chemistry for fragrances. If there is a chance a fragrance will smell good, it'll smell good on my skin. There's something about my body chemistry that 10 times out of 10, the fragrance will smell better on me than anybody else. That is just how my body chemistry works. I think that's why I like so many things because I've smelled fragrances on my skin compared to everybody else and everyone's like, yeah, it smells better on you. It's just really lucky with body chemistry. However, not Jo Malone and it smelled rancid. It smelled like I had taken like Raid, like Hornet Killer and just shh, and then taken like way old milk and just poured it on my head. It did not smell good. And there's something in some of Jo Malone's fragrances that just do not smell okay on my skin. So I don't just buy Jo Malone fragrances because there is, there's something that it is a it is not a smell it is a science that we just don't mesh well we just we just know it's like diet pepsi and mentos it just doesn't work i mean it's interesting it's fun to watch but it's messy and nobody really wants to clean up after that um however i do enjoy jo malone fragrances now jo malone is a luxury house and they are not they haven't tried to be anything more than subtle. Some of their fragrances are a little bit more inspired. They are subtle fragrances. They are more discreet, delicate, not all of them. Their performance isn't the best. I don't mind it. I don't think that their price point is insanely overpriced, but I can see people not appreciating the price point based on longevity. So, I actually enjoy Jo Malone fragrances. I do buy them from time to time, but I don't just blindly buy Jo Malone fragrances because again, at least a third of them have turned um, not so good on my skin. <laughs> so that is why I don't just buy Jo Malone. I do test them. I do try to get samples of them and wear them um, for a few days. And normally I think some of their newer fragrances, I don't know if they've redone their formula or anything like that. They have been a little bit better. Grapefruit still does not smell good on my skin, but that is why I don't just buy Jo Malone. But they do have performance issues and they are expensive. So I can see people 
not liking the fact that they're not beastly fragrances, they don't have the best performance in regards to longevity, and they can be on the pricier side. But I don't just buy Jo Malone because I'm worried it's gonna smell like I just, you know, poured sour milk all over myself, and I don't wanna smell like that. I like to smell challenging and avant-garde. I'm not quite that level of challenging and avant-garde. Older video where I reviewed Aqua Celestia Forte, um, Mingale M asked, does this smell like a mojito drink perhaps? I would say yes, but I would say actually the original Aqua Celestia smells a little bit more like a mojito. I think it's a little bit brighter and fresher. So if you're looking for a perfect mojito drink fragrance, I would say of the MFK fragrances, Aqua Celestia versus Aqua Celestia Forte, Go for the Aqua Celestia. That one to me smells more mojito-ish. And if you blend it with lemon verde, it, it works really well. And Herba Fresca too. Any of those would work really well if you're looking for a mojito-inspired uh, fragrance. But between the two, I would say go for the Aqua Celestia because in my opinion, I think Aqua Celestia Forte is a little bit too indulgent and not as bright and sparkling as Aqua Celestia. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for dealing with the weird jumps and my runny nose and my rambling sentences. And everyone still asks why I look here. I've mentioned it before, it's because of headaches. But I wanna thank you all for sitting through this long video and always for just commenting and engaging in my videos and reviews and stuff like that. I really super appreciate it. As always guys, I hope you're all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I will see you next time.